Hello, my friends. I'm Lucas and you're watching Codemons PL. If you like my work, please remember to click thumb up, subscribe to my channel and write some comments. First of all, I would like to mention my wonderful patrons who support my activity. Massive thanks, guys. These are people who believed in my passion, saw something valuable in it and decided to support me. It's really great when you know that there are a few crazy guys in the world who think like you, want to watch what you do and appreciate the effect of your work. This is really super motivating and gives you the strength to continue working. Please don't forget that you can be one of them. Just check my Patreon page and decide if you want to stay with me or go back home. There are different options to join, but you need to decide by yourself. Once you join, you will be able to surf on my page with no limits, watch and download all superb high resolution pictures, watch progress shots, check stories with unpublished in other media models, read the articles, watch the videos with no adverts and enjoy other benefits. Thanks to this, I will try to give you some interesting content to keep you informed and entertained. I'm not pushing, but you know, I'd like to make millions from modeling and this is the easiest way. I'm joking of course, but the truth is that it would be great to do this as a regular job. The only way is to build the channel and get new patrons. That's why in each episode I encourage you to support me in my passion. And I realize it's not easy these days, but if you have a few bucks you could drop in my cup, that would be great. Thanks. We finished the previous episode at this stage. The model is already on a base, but it's completely unpainted. Today I am going to paint all the elements and apply decals so that it's ready for weathering and placing on a stand. Assembling it takes a few moments due to the limited number of elements, but also because I always try to glue as many parts as possible. Of course, it, this is not always possible and it's not always a good solution, especially when it comes to stress-free painting. Several times I saw models from other modelers that were painted not assembled but only built into larger elements. I don't know if this is convenient because I have never tested such a solution. Maybe so? Let me know in the comments whether you work this way and what the advantages and disadvantages of this solution are. All the antennas, the machine gun section and optoelectronics were mounted on wooden sticks for easier manipulation during painting. The hull and turret have glued in nuts for mounting screws which serve as handles during painting and weathering. Of course these screws will stay there permanently because there is no point in separating them from the plastic. Without a debonder it's almost impossible but also risky. This can be an easy way to damage the plastic. As you have just seen, both nuts were sanded for better adhesion, so they are glued really tightly. I cleaned the entire model with model degreaser of all impurities that occurred while working on the model. This was a necessary step because I decided that this time I would not use a primer and would apply the paint directly to the plastic. I already remember the last time I did this and I also want to check the effectiveness of the degreaser. I covered all metal elements with a thin layer of metal primer. This of course applies to the towing cables, the barrel and the handles on the turret and small elements added here and there throughout the model. Of course I didn't forget about the antennas that are waiting for the turn attached to the piece of the balsa wood. The base color is Nato Green XF67 diluted with X20A. I used Neo Echo airbrush for painting. The first layer is quite thin and is intended to create a good base for the second layer, which will cover all surfaces equally. Here it took me more time to replenish the paint than to paint it because, as you can see, I don't do it in a sophisticated way. Generally I try to apply the paint evenly, covering all surfaces with an even layer.
I added one drop of lighter paint to five drops of the basic color. I started painting discolorations with this mixture using stencils. They are more often used for painting airplanes, but they also do a nice job on a single color camo. I've used them before on Sherman. For everyone who wants to ask where I bought them, I will answer that they are no longer available from my source, but I have seen them in various modeling stores. So there is nothing else to do but search well or ask modelers who built airplanes for help. The second turn was done with darker mixture but in small amount just to make some spots here and there. I made discolorations on all surfaces, both horizontal and vertical. I realized that some of them will not be visible due to the camo that will appear soon, but also due to weathering, which by its nature will change the appearance and color of the model. Due to the camo I had to make markings on the side covers at this point. From the old Dragon set I have in my collection I cut out a dozen or so stickers that will be useful for this model. In addition to the side markings there are also a few service inscriptions which I will attach later. I reduced the mention marking slightly and cut them out with a hobby knife cutting off the transparent film. Generally speaking it doesn't matter to me whether the content is correct because I care more about the cool appearance of the entire model. Therefore if you are familiar with modern American markings do not criticize me for arranging them this way on this model. However first I covered the particular places on the model with modeler's world glossy varnish. Two thin layers were enough to make a good base for decals. Applying was a piece of cake and it took only a few minutes to put them on the model. Of course I helped them stick to the surface using the decal adapter from AK. Soaking the decals twice with the product gave a sufficient effect and the inscriptions blended perfectly into the paint surface. Once they were completely dry I covered the stickers with two thin coats of glossy varnish. Leaving the hull aside for a moment I started painting the elements that were to be sand colored. A mixture of XF78 and X2 was applied to several wheels, antennas, both optoelectronic elements and the entire secondary weapon system. Before I moved on to further work, I covered the markings on the sides with matte varnish, which resulted in a perfect appearance of the markings without any visible shine. They look exactly as they should. I started preparing the side surface for camo painting. First I applied a layer of easy chipping medium on them, which will be necessary to create the right look for the light spots. This product can be applied using the atomizer in the bottle, but also with an airbrush which seems to be more effective and precise. I applied it to the sides of the hull and turret as well as to the barrel, where there will also be sand camo necessary to apply the inscription with the name of the vehicle. To paint the camo spots I used ready to use masks from solid scale. It's true that they are adapted to German vehicles from World War II, but they will also work on Abrams as you will see in a moment. It's a very thin foil with glue on one side that is applied to the model. It sticks to the surface very well, but you have to work harder on larger bands. I didn't have to adhere exactly to such invenesses and in fact I wanted to camo to be imperfect in these places, so I didn't worry about the gaps in which the paint went. Of course you need to use thicker paints to paint on such masks, because if it's too thin it will make more of a mess than you would like.
After removing the masks, Abrams looks quite interesting, but this is not the end of the work with this color. Activating easy chipping medium is very easy because it only requires water and paint removal tool. Of course, it's the best to work in the small sections, controlling the surface humidity and the size of the scratches created with a brush, toothpick or any other tool. Each of them creates a different type, size and shape of paint damage, so it's worth using different tools to create interesting looking scratches. It's also worth remembering how and thanks to what external factors they arise. Thinner for acrylic paints can also be used to remove the paint. Here on the example of one fragment you can see exactly how you can work with it. Please keep in mind that the paint comes off quite easily, so it's advisable to be careful not to damage the layer that is supposed to remain intact. Using acrylic paints and a good thinner, I started painting details on the entire model. There is no great philosophy, rocket science or difficulty here, so my comment is rather unnecessary. I am going to prepare a drink for myself and leave you with Abrams for a while. Ok, I'm back, just in time for painting trucks. 
In the end I assume that they will be very modest so any painting will lose its important role. That's why I don't care much about what they look like now. I'm more interested in adding base colors. I don't know how you approach it, maybe you consider it unprofessional, but what matters to me is the final effect and even if I had to paint them with children's paints, it doesn't matter to me at all. The first color is of course silver as the base for the entire track. Rubber black is perfect for painting rubber elements on both sides. The vast majority of them will not be visible under the side covers and pressed into the mud, but I don't know exactly which part of them will remain visible, so I am painting the whole tracks. Finally, I painted yellow tips marking equal sections on both tracks. This introduces an interesting color detail. Now all that's left to do is get them really dirty. But first I applied a thin layer of glossy varnish to the entire model, preparing the surface for decals and wash and added weathering effects. There are not many stickers, but they will undoubtedly add some variety to the overall appearance of the model. Finally, something unique. I decided to add custom markings to the sides of the hull and the roof of the turret. For this I will use shiny adhesive tape and cut strips exactly the same width as the tape you see. About 5 cm at 1 to 1 scale is about 1.5 mm at 35 scale. The tape is white so it will contrast perfectly with the camo colors. I glued it in a careless way and it looks natural. Letter and numbers don't have any meaning and don't copy the markings of any particular vehicle. Finally I soaked the stickers with AK product, the same I used before, and left the entire model to dry for a few hours. Now it's ready for the next episode and I hope to see you there if you are curious what this beast will look like after weathering, when it will turn into a muddy warrior. So thanks for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe and write some comments. That's all for today, see you next time, cheers!